All right, we're loaded onto Ephemeron with another community cast. In the top left-hand side, in the red, the red badass Protoss, it is Tendiston. And in the bottom right-hand side, in the blue, is the Terran. I will uh, attempt this in one shot. Espartaco. 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 Yes. Indeed. You can't not see the taco at the end of this name. It's not possible. Uh, es es Espartaco. <laughs> anyway, this is a quite the fast probe tendison. Can we opt to actually wall off here at the top of his main? If I'm not even in the map pool anymore, I just realized um, it was quite one of the most uh, standard maps of uh, last season's pool. So glad to see it back here for just a little second here. And that's Bartaco pretty much going at for that uh, gas first, I believe. Um, is that gas first? Hold on. I'll be able to tell. Uh, that is... I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. I, I, uh, yes, this is hundred. I think this is gas for. He's actually gonna go for reapers. Look at that, a little probe harass out of ten distant onto that, and I think he's actually gonna get it. Yeah, it doesn't actually get the repair, and he just runs away with that probe, and that's completely fine with him. Just stalling as much as possible. Do not lose your probe though, and that was a little bit too much of the delay. Ideally, what you want to do, just get rid of the shields, come back with the shields, and then fight another day. Ten distant though, going for that zealot into cybercore. This is pretty much a PVP opening. Uh, hopefully he knows that this is a PVT right now. And Espartaco going for a straight up bunker at the front with actually no expansion in front of it. So um, that's not going to pan out too well. As uh, It's kind of weird because he did go for gases, but he's actually making Marines, uh, rallying them straight across the map. That's one Reaper right there. I don't know if that was supposed to be a Reaper, but uh, it might be next up. Tendison looking for a possible proxy kind of... Uh, Kind of thing. He's not going to find it though. He will. He will find the bunker and actually start working on it if he wants to. Marines are not even close to being here though. And he's actually going to go for that runaway SCV, and he has to make sure that these do not go up. He has to start making units as ASAP, pretty much. Look at that a little SCV trick right there, popping it into the bunker, actually killing one of them. And uh, those Marines are well on their way. Hopefully, he did do not get inside the bunker. He's trying to do as much damage as possible. He's going to try and finish that bunker, but he actually needs some units. Two Adepts are being uh, put out right now. And a Robo Facility, which I love, by the way, for uh, multiple of reasons. But we'll get back to it very, very soon. He's going to try and get the SCV. And the SCV can't actually load yet. If, if he right-clicks on it, ooh, actually, he does use the hockey, which is very, very nice. Nice micro so far. He's, is he actually going to get the SCV? He does need to target fire it with something. And another SCV being pulled by Espar Taco right now. Getting rid of that one SCV. He has to make sure he pulls back all of those adepts. And he does not pull it back far enough. A nice micro out of Espar Taco right now. Tr putting it back into the bunker. And he probably wants to finish the second one. Two more adepts on the way. But as soon as this robo is done, you can either get a Warp Prism or a uh, Immortal. Both of which would be amazing versus this Warp Prism simply to go around it. and then the Im Or the Immortal simply to... Um, busted down he does have to get rid of the SVs though they are trying to come across the map he has so much gas but he's not actually using any of it look at that this is reapers couple of marines and mostly bunkers uh he is dropping down a factory now though but this is going to start to get into a very very weird game i believe he's going to start to make shield batteries very very soon as that will be really good with the um immortal however look at that it's actually in range of the bunker and this is not going to go well right now for 10 distant he has to figure out a way to actually bust this down. The Reapers are here, though, and they can always threaten a counterattack, which is not great. Pretend isn't as if he tries to defend, maybe they'll try and run up here towards the right side of the ramp, starting to build shield batteries as well. Hopefully, uh, maybe, actually, if he didn't put that pylon right there, he might have been able to hit that bunker with that stalker as well. Warp Gate is finished, and he does have the Immortal coming out very, very soon. Now, I do not think that uh, Espartaco actually has the necessary SCVs. In fact, he sent them all home. Does not have the SCVs to actually repair this, but I think what he's going to want to do is possibly counterattack. And uh, if he needs to, he'll just switch from bunker to bunker until it is absolutely done. Now, the Warp Prism is the next step out of Tendison, and I absolutely love this. Going for a counterattack right after his... The production here... I mean, not the production is, is fine, but I mean, his army is not at home right now. In fact, he does have a lot of Reapers, and he's losing some of them for free. And a, a one base Protoss, quite stronger than a one base Terran, if I do say so myself. However, the second base is already down for the Terran player, and he's going to be ready to lift that up very, very soon. He's going to be using a War Prism here, uh, probably to either uh, go around the bunkers or simply to micro against them. 
Or you can just go across the map with them as well. Looks like we're going to see what he actually wants to do. You can actually, I think, drop this mortar here on the low ground, bust down that bunker, and uh, use those shield batteries. There you go. To use those shield batteries to actually heal. And this is going to be some dead bunkers right there. Immortal's fantastic for counterattack. Going for an Oracle behind this as well. I really love that. And uh, looks like there's going to be... Oh, okay. He is making a turret in his main. He's probably scared of some potential DTs. And uh, we'll see where the game goes from here. So far, pretty similar in terms of the worker supply. Um, but uh, quite uh, different in terms of the army supply. Tendison has a really big army in behind this. He's going to go for an Oracle across the map, as well as a War Prism with the Immortals as well. And um, where's he going? He's going to wait for the second Immortal. Going for Immortal drops, it seems like. I really like that. It's going to be some really heavy, heavy harassment at that point. And uh, looks like the Terran player is starting to um, kind of set up the front defense here. However... He's not coming in from the front. He's coming in from the right side. And uh, there is a turn in the main, but not in the natural. He might be able to get a couple of SCVs. Hopefully he doesn't lose it when he tries to run into the main. That uh, that um, Immortal Drop has been sent out right now. That's one SCV down. He tries to be fancy and drops the SCV. Uh, sorry, the uh, Marine's on top of it. It's not going to work, though. Ooh, that's a dangerous word of mine right there. Hopefully he does spot it and does not lead his... Uh, War Prism into that Widow Mine. That would be really terrible as a Widow Mine plus a couple of Marine Shot, and that's a dead War Prism, and that is so much money in there. It's 275 plus 275. Uh, that's 550 minerals. This is like 750 minerals right there. Ooh, look at that. He actually used the Oracle to bait out the uh, the Mine Shot, and now it's free reigns into that base, and he can do whatever he wants at that point. Those Immortals so strong right now, taking care of that turret at that point, and pretty much nothing can actually deal with these Immortals right now. They're such thick boys. Grenades won't do anything. In fact, um... Those Immortals will just keep doing damage infinitely. In behind this, though, Tendison does need to make a couple more workers. He does finally have his expansion, which was quite a bit later than uh, um, Espartaco's. But now he's actually going into the main base. He has to make sure his uh, War Prison does not get hit too much by those Immortals. And, uh, I mean, I do think those Immortals are quite stronger than the bio that is there. But you can always jungle at any time. Look at that fantastic micro out of Tendison right now. Utilizing all of these immortals to their full potential, not losing them to the. Oh my god. He can actually do some pickup micro and actually dodge the wood of mine shots if he wants. So I think that's exactly what he's going to do. But he's a little bit too shy. Oh man. Here we go. Even more damage out of these immortals. And this is fantastic damage out of Tendis. And, and all these wood of mines are kind of useless. And he, as uh, the war prism can help you dodge all of those shots quite, quite easily. And look at that. Some more Juggle Micro out of Tendis. And in behind this, though, he does have a Templar Archives. It seems, it seems like they're going to want to go for Storm or possible. Ooh, he has to get out of there right now. I think he knows it as well. Now, that was actually tricky because the Command Center Flying was actually hiding the Widow Mine that was right here. Ooh, actually taking care of the Warp is recalling instantly fantastic moves out of Tendis and making sure he did not lose those expensive units as that was a total of 750 minerals right there. In terms of that of harassment, so the fact that he didn't lose that is fantastic. He does need to actually use his Chrono Boost and Energy, though, and doesn't need to macro up from here. The worker count, surprisingly even, a lot of workers have been killed so far. It looks like nine uh, has been killed uh, from the Terran player. But he's still up in workers, though, which is not great. However, we are going into Storm at this point, and uh, anything can happen from there. More gates on the way as well. Charge on the way. And uh, t uh, all of the upgrades pretty much coming in at the same time. I think Tendison thinks that, uh, you know, the Terran player is not going to be uh, on the aggression too, too fast here. Not in terms of frontal pushes. Uh, so he is he does feel comfortable in terms of actually getting all of these upgrades out. Triple Widowmine drop, though, at that almost 10-minute mark. Uh, that's not going to be quite expected out of Tendison. I don't think his attention is going to be quite there. And that can potentially do a lot of damage. And I'm not too sure what Tendison's plan of attack here is. I mean, I'm not sure he can he can go towards the front. I actually wait. I do think so. If he scouts with the sh uh, depth shades, which I think he's gonna do, he's gonna realize that's a singular tank, and that's gonna not gonna help much. Pulling the SCVs pretty much directly. He actually finishes the shade, which I don't agree with. And he actually does need to take care of that tank as fast as possible. He does need to target fire that tank though. That tank needs to go down. That tank needs to go down. He's not target firing it, and that tank is doing a lot of work right now. His yeah, all of his army had to be there at the same time. He's finally targeting and firing the tank. He has to make sure he doesn't lose the Warp Prism to the 
Uh, turret, though, that's really, really important. And all those Widemonts actually did quite a bit of damage. So 10 to 15 right now. The Terran's still ahead in workers, so he's still in a fine position, but he has to defend this. I'm not sure how he's going to defend it, though, as those mortals are really, really beefy. He does have a tank on the high ground, but, I mean, the Warp Prism can help him just walk around it if he wants to. Looks like Henderson is going to stay at the natural. He can actually use his Observer if he wants to, to try and spot the front here and what's actually going on. In behind us, though, oh, man. He does have to actually take care of all these widow mines, though. It's starting to become a problem as Stendison only has 21 workers to his name. Uh, and the armies are quite even, actually. That stalker's going to go down pretty much instantly. Bam! Kablooey. And uh, from there, I'm not... I'm actually... To be honest, I don't even think he can actually walk down and take care of this. I think he can, though, if he wanted to. But, look at... He is going to be going towards that. He's going to recall those uh, immortals. And he keeps those expensive units alive. Probably going to go from Archons behind this, but he needs more economy. His economy is hurting so bad, 25 to 36. And although he actually busted the front for a second time, um, and he is behind an economy, he does have a third base. So I do say this game is kind of even in a way. Um, Taco is... Uh, I'm just going to call him Taco. Screw it. Uh, that tank is stuck as well. I'm just going to I'm just gonna shame him right now. Shame! Feel the shame, Taco. You have a stuck tank. <laughs> anyway... The third base finally finishing out of 10 discs, and he does need to actually repopulate his economy if he wants to keep up in this game. So far, the army is still in favor of 10 discs, and as he did not lose his immortals, and if he did, uh, this would be a very, very different game, but it is absolutely not at this point. Plus one, plus one is on the way as well. What are the upgrades like for Taco? Looks like it is already 1-1, one, one, so if uh, 10 discs wants to come back in this game, he definitely needs to get that 1-1 one, one finished be able to close it out. I would probably stop making Immortals at this point. I think uh, just that number is quite nice at this point. Probably any other unit would be good. Um, either Colossus or Disruptor or anything, but uh, I think the, that Immortal count is fine for sure. Taco actually going for the Planetary Fortress at the third build. That's, that's how you know someone's a scrub, but I do understand the situation. There are situations where it's very useful. Look at that. Actually intercepting that drop there. Doesn't actually have Bling Stalkers, but... Uh, Taco knows that he spotted it, but that drop might actually still do quite a bit of damage. I mean, Tendison is trying to go for an odd angle here in terms of attacking, just to make sure the opponent does not scout him. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to pay off as much as he wants. Does he have an Observer here? Looks like no. That's a lot of tanks, but uh, Zelts are really good versus tanks. So it's very still very possible. The army is not together, though, and the Immortals are straggling into the back line. Dropping those Archons onto the actual tanks. That's a fantastic move here, Artendison. He's going to target fire that one as well. But the third base is going down at the same time to a singular drop by Taco. And the Archons are in the main base. They're sieging pretty much the protection as the Immortals are wreaking havoc into the mineral line of the natural. And who comes out on top here? I do believe that Tendison is doing quite fine here. Nice pickup micro as well. He can actually warp in if he wants to. Depends what he wants to do. He is actually sending the drop back. Wait, did he not kill? <gasps> he, didn't ki he didn't kill the Nexus. Are you shitting me? You had one job, one job, drop. Oh God, and he still didn't actually do it. And now he's actually into the production that, he does he save it? Oh, he barely saves it, which is really good. And more tanks are here, but the Immortals are here as well. The drop is gonna try and reinforce, but it is way too late. And Tendison dropping the storms on the bad boy. And he is going to be closing out this game very, very soon at this point. More Zealot reinforcements coming in towards the front. And that's a bad game into a good game by Taco. And that is GG. And Tendison takes it.